So anyway, I was uh, talking to Game War a little bit ago about going on you now tonight and doing a kind of a test run on there. But he, I don't know if he's if he's available or not. But he, um, I asked him to invite me because he goes on there more than I do, and ask him to invite me to his profile because that's how you you know you get on you now with your profile and then you invite people to it and it creates a group but he he said he didn't understand what i meant so I, and then i didn't hear back from him if you're on if if he's i don't know doesn't seem to be he doesn't seem to be responding now <laughs> But I don't know. I think I'm going to try sometime maybe over the weekend to go on there. And maybe before we do a uh, a group event or just whatever, maybe we'll go on there and test it out a few times. I've been on there once. And the one time that I was on there, we had – it's kind of like TikTok where we had a swarm of people come in right away. And we don't know how many of them were just bots or how many of them were real people. I had people, you know, um, add me to their friends list and things like that. But I'm not really sure, like, I haven't been on there long enough to really understand how you now works. <clears throat> so it's one of the things that I want to check into. So, yeah, the um, on the website that I was showing you last night that we're potentially going to use, I figured out the login thing. You, you would it just simply, you know, sign up. You can use uh, Google, Facebook, or your email. And then it goes into, a, I don't know why it does this. There might be a setting where I can automatically approve people. But I think it does it so that you have a chance to review whoever is asking to be a member before you accept them which is kind of a safety mechanism. You don't want trolls coming in, and this is a way to stop a troll, you know. So anyway, uh, but if you were to um, sign up, it would go to me as the admin, and I would be able to then approve you, and then you'd, you would be a member of the website, which means that you can post in the forum area, which is kind of like a Facebook-type, timeline thing where you could post pictures, videos, updates. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of, uh, over the next few weeks, a lot of posting in there just kind of to set up conversations. Um, one of the things that I discovered in my research over the last year is that I found that Christians are more inclined to be involved in forums where they can actually discuss things in length which, you know, makes sense. If you're a, you know, Christian, you want to discuss topics. You know, you don't want to, I'm not saying, you know, that we don't want to do, you know, like a TikTok video or watch a TikTok video or um, post like in Facebook. But Facebook to me is a waste of time. And, for, and, and if you're wanting to have live chat, I mean, if you're just wanting to post something, like say to your family, your friends, and you don't care if they don't respond for a week, then that's fine. Facebook then is a good place. But if you're trying to get people coming and discussions, and that, then it really is not a forum. So we have a forum, 
and we're going to invite Christians and that's part of what we're doing. And, you know, one of the things that I discovered was there's a site called Feed Spot, which allows you to put your website on there and then get traffic from other uh, sources. They source out your site. People can find you. They can, you know, if it's Christians, they'll put it in a Christian category and then people can come to your site. We will get, there's no doubt we'll get some people. Um, I can't, nobody can, you know, say how many people you would get because that's all, you know, up to chance. Really, there's no guarantee when you when you advertise. <clears throat> but I believe we'll get some people. And if we can get a few people and maybe some people will get interested in what we're doing and maybe there's somebody out there that has a real calling in their life to do this and they could help us. I mean, that would be awesome. That's what God has done in the past. He's put people in my life on here that has had uh, some experience, people that wanted to help, and that makes it go. I mean, when we had some people, even on Discord, when we started getting a few people that were helping us, we started to see how that, we were starting to get some people. It was starting to happen, but then we had, we had some troll, trollish type people that <clears throat> that came in, and of course, you know, you always have to worry about the the trolls, you know, whenever you're doing something like this. <laughs> it's just part of the, uh, unfortunately, part of the uh, experience. Trolls are what we call a troll is just somebody that really is just coming in to try to disrupt the flow of what God's doing. And no, we don't mean a troll like that. <laughs> if you're from the 90s, you would remember that. I think my daughter even had some of those at one point. <clears throat> yeah, I am recording. Um Thanks, so for reminding me, because, you know, I would usually forget, but I just was able to remember today. <clears throat> so that's kind of where it's at right now. We're just kind of getting through this deep freeze. Wasn't really able to do a whole lot in this last week. It's been too cold. Um, I was able to, my dog, you know, being a husky, loves the outside, even when it's cold. Uh, Caleb, <laughs> Shrek. Shrek's the ultimate troll, though, isn't he? But, um, yeah, I think slowly but surely we're making some progress here in some areas and trying to figure some things out. Um, once we start getting some people, we start running some events. And the events can be trigger points for some of the people that we're inviting. Um, but definitely um, having a website now that it's been up for a while, a couple of years, just hasn't been used really. And so having a website where we can invite people to will make a big difference as well, because then people will have a landing space. They can communicate with us right away and we can start having these conversations, discussions and forums and, and then having, you know, times like this. Um, again, we can still use Telegram as a way of communicating and using it even in our group because of, of that, you know, application button that I can, you know, 
add to the site. I, I think it's something that uh, I think it's free if you make one application on there because they have all kinds of different. They offer all kinds of different um, things that you can put on your website. But I think if you just have one, it's free. So you just basically can use it. And now that will allow people to link to us right here. And then we can do these kinds of events on here. We can do live streaming um, video. We can do, we can even use the um, Bible app video chat that, you know, for like live streaming Bible studies, all, because that's just basically a YouTube link. Anybody anywhere can click on that and, get that so we can still use that as well but having this and then having the ability to there's also a chat right in the um, website that's text chat and it will give us if they sign up with their email or whatever they they can join that chat or if they just want to join the, the uh, Telegram chat, then basically if they're already on Telegram, they'll simply be able to log in. Well, they'll be directed right to our, right here, right where we're at right now. And then they would just join it. If they haven't joined Telegram yet, then they would just join Telegram and then it would redirect them back into here. So that way we can keep up with people or for a third way, they can simply answer our forum post. And so, yeah, so there's a lot of ways for people that are we're reaching out to out there in the web, in the Internet world. We're trying to reach those people as we send out those links, as we send out those advertisements. Pretty soon, those people will start coming into the website. And that's how we're going to get them in. It's the same way as if you were to send a, a link to Facebook and you got maybe somebody that you already knew. We And we have those people. I mean, I just talked to Hannah. I don't know if you – I know you remember Hannah and Jordan, Caleb. They've been with us since Rabbit Chat. Well, actually, were they – yeah, Rabbit Chat. I don't – no, were they on Wire Club? I don't think so. I think they were on Rabbit Chat. Yeah, we we met them on there. But at any rate, um, I just seen how Hannah replied to a post that I made um, on Facebook, and then I reached out to her. But then, but then again, you know, I don't see her that much, so she might not get my comment for a month. So I, <laughs> that's a slow process of conversation. Hello. And then a month later, hi. And then a month later, how are you? A month later, oh, I'm fine. That's a terrible format of communication. We got to get people on the website so we can live chat them, so we can forum post them, so we can get them involved in discussion. That's how we do it. That's how we've been doing it. Well, we can still do that, but we just got to find a way to do it with these ads and stuff. So, um. But, yeah, that's probably our best, safest way to do it. And I posted this, really like this uh, meme or Giphy file I posted on here. Let's see if I can find it. Yesterday, I think I posted it in my... Uh, uh, let's see, where did I post it at? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of posting in Facebook simply because I have a lot of friends in there. And It's been really, really uh, growing. You know, people are coming in and they're, well, they're, they're getting a hold of the post and stuff. Do it now. <laughs> Do it now. Uh, If 
I got to go out and get my dog. He half the time he don't want to come in. He likes to stay outside in that cold weather. hard when you find a, a really good Giphy file, but you don't, if it's on Facebook, you can't save it to your computer or to your file. It just comes up as like a Facebook link back. So Facebook wants you to send it, share it, but they want you to send it so that people are linked back to Facebook, which I don't want to do that. I just want to share the the Giphy file because it was great. But I'll see if I can find it. I don't know if there's, I don't, what I should do is probably just join that Giphy site and then it'll have a history of my gifts, which I never really got that deep into sending gifts. But being that this one was really good, I think that might be it. No, that's not it. That's close to it, but it isn't it. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Wow, I found it. Yeah, I really like that. Share the light. All right, I'll be right back. I got to grab my dog from outside. I don't even...
<laughs> oh man. Usually it's a stare down. I try to get him in the house because he's like he doesn't want to come in, so he just looks at me. Then I have to go grab something to try to lure him in the house. And that can be a challenge because then he'll look at it and go, no, not enough. And then I got to go get something else. No, not enough. And finally, if he likes it, he'll come in the house. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's the game we play every night. Uh, but tonight he was looking like he, we have two entrances to get into the house. So he was looking at, he was at the other entrance. Like he wanted to come in. So I think he was a little cold tonight. Right there. Under the bed. Yeah. Right there. There we go. Yeah. He's a big baby. A big baby. Everything. A big baby. Whoop. What am I doing here? It's hard to see this with a mobile phone. Oh, there he is. What I need is to do it. Wait. Is that... No. Usually there's a reverse camera. I'm not sure how it works. Uh, oh, it doesn't really matter. He took off. Ah, oh, your dog's cute. Look at that. <laughs> Looks like he's comfortable. And once in a rare while, he'll pee in the house, like, at night. But he's still, like, a year old, so he's not totally, you know, an adult yet. But he really doesn't. I mean, he, normally he'll go outside. He was cold tonight because he, he normally... Uh, <clears throat> Along my fence line, I have, we built, uh, like, 
this, I don't know what you call it, like like a long shelf along the fence line that we put uh, boxes of dirt that we planted stuff so it was off the ground, like vegetables, tomatoes, and things like that. Well, it sits, you know, about halfway. It's a wooden fence. It's probably, I don't know, maybe five foot tall fence. I don't know. But anyway, about halfway along the fence line. And so he jumps up there and he's kind of made it his bad area when he's out there. He likes to walk along and he looks over the fence, but luckily he hasn't figured out that he could jump over the fence. So he's kind of uh, goes in there and he's usually asleep in there. Like if he goes outside, he'll just go up there and sleep. But tonight he was like, wanted to get in, but it is super cold out tonight. I mean, it's probably not as cold as it has been, but he was out there quite a while. I think, Man, let's see, 20, 20, oh, probably an hour outside. Like I said, I don't know how cold it is. It's, I'll tell you in a second. It's eight degrees. Feels like one degrees. That's cold. No wonder he's wanting to come in so much. I ain't going to hurt him. I mean, this dog is, these dogs were bred to be in 30 below zero weather. But that doesn't mean, you know, you can leave them. You can't leave them out for a real, real long time. It's only going to be 18 tomorrow. Sunday. Oh, we're getting almost up to 40. Wait, 45 on Thursday or Friday? Well, we're going to get above freezing anyway. That's going to be awesome. Oh, that's great. <clears throat> well, no wonder he was out there ready to come in. I, you know, it's a t if he was only out there, usually I, I'd let him out for 15 minutes. Or if he's, you know, all right, you know, I just leave him out there for a half hour. But any any more than that, I think he starts to, even he starts to feel cold. Did you get a lot of snow, Caleb? <laughs> Your dog is naughty, don't listen to you. My dog is like that too, but huskies are kind of known to be sort of, I don't care. <laughs> They're like the diva of the dog world. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Now, if there's food involved, he'll do whatever you want. You basically have to bribe him with food. That's the only thing that works. My favorite, my favorite meme is uh, 
there's that husky with a face like that, and it's like somebody. He says, "If you're gonna break into my house," and he's got that scary face. He goes, "Bring me some chicken." <laughs> bring me some chicken. <laughs> if you're gonna break into my house, bring me some chicken. Oh man, that's so so funny. These dogs, I you know, this isn't my first husky. I in the '90s, I had probably as many as eight different huskies at one time. <clears throat> I've always loved these dogs, but, you know, so for a lot of years, I didn't have them. Yeah, pizza, that that's exactly right. They love pizza. I don't know a dog that doesn't, though, really, but they really enjoy that pizza. I'll tell you what. <laughs> what in the world did people come up with here? <laughs> He don't want it. He don't want it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, boy, I'll tell you. Oh. <clears throat> the hardest thing is when it's cold like this. And I can't just go outside all the time. I mean, it's just too cold. So kind of stuck in the house with him. And he's he gets bored really easily. And he's not, you know, sometimes he'll just go to sleep. And when he does, I'm like, oh, thank God. Because otherwise I got to try to entertain him. And usually his form of entertainment is trying to chew my hands or, you know, <laughs> really just really <laughs> great crazy you know antics that he does so tonight i sort of uh i had these old he loves shoes not not like hey i'll bring you your slippers he'll chew your slippers up it's like you know i'll just chew them up you know that's what he does so i i found an old shoe and i gave it to him and that kept him busy for about an hour so it's like you gotta find things for him to do yeah, I'm hoping that we get into a warm, at least in the 30s again, where, because then, you know, I can go outside. You made him wear it. <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I heard. I think, I think with most dogs, that's a puppy stage where they do grow out of it. Whereas huskies never grow out of that. They love to chew stuff up. And I mean, maybe when he's like really old, like if I have him 10, 12 years, he'll stop. But from what I've seen, I mean, he's getting there. Like he's starting to get more calmer now where he'll, he will come in and lay on the bed. Sometimes he'll go to sleep. Sometimes he has a spot. He likes to lay under my desk right here. There's a giant, you know, opening for like a chair. And he just, I don't know how he even fits in there, but he just crams himself in there and that's where he sleeps. Well, he's got four different sleeping spots. That's one of them. <laughs> but anyway.
Yep. That's my dog. That that must be a husky thing because he likes to play with his wa- the water. He'll put his whole face in it and his paws. He usually in the summer he would just take his paws and just you know, water everywhere. It's funny that when I see other videos of other huskies and the the same habits, same things, they they must just be in the breed, I guess. I don't know. Oh, this would have been a good one. Merry Christmas. That even looks like my dog. He's silver and and white, but he he has some different markings on his face well oh you just got a new Kmore or got a new phone Yeah, so I think most people use their phone nowadays. I think people are using laptops less and less. Now, I still use my laptop a lot. Um, There's just certain things I can't do on a phone, like administrative things where I need to go into a dashboard. And a lot of uh, dashboards and administration centers don't even have uh, access to mobile yet. They're still using, or you have to use a, a laptop, but that's kind of like different than like running a video program or watching videos on TikTok or, or YouTube or whatever. <clears throat> so I found out how to invite people to the video. If you're a member of Telegram, I can easily invite you to it when we're live. If you're online, I think it even even if you're offline, it will. um, It will alert you that we're live. Yeah, you get an invite like that, and then you can join. I'm going to try doing that um, invite to my sister just to see if she's able to. No, it's just it's Salvation Chat is the link. Um, Mary Jane. Let me see. She's not in the group, though. Oh, I wonder if it would work. I wonder if that would work for her. Yeah, I have her. Oh, let's see if she'll accept it. Anyway, we can start getting some people that way as well. You know, if you have anybody that you know that you want to invite. um, It's hard because so many of the people, like I said, that I know, they're on Facebook and stuff. And Facebook is really, I mean, people don't go on there as much as they used to. Like, I know people that maybe every couple months they go on there. They're not using it now for whatever reason. They kind of got burned out on it, or maybe they're using TikTok more or whatever. I think um, we need to 
talk about maybe doing TikTok. I don't know. Some people are against it. Some people are for it. I don't know. I mean, what are, what are your thoughts on that? Maybe we could, you know, talk about that sometime. That would be a good discussion to have, I guess. You know, you can do polls on here. All right. Well, it looks like more of the yeses have it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm not ready to go on TikTok yet. I think it's something I'm going to pray about and do a little more research, you know. I know that you got to have a lot of people in order to do, like, really – longer videos otherwise you'd just be stuck doing short videos and i mean yeah that's something that you could do but i think i'd had i'd have a lot of uh research to do on that one he got a iphone 14 those are nice i guess Oh, what happened? Did your phone break or something? Oh, okay. <laughs> Concrete one, huh? Oh, man. Uh, well, at least you're getting, uh, at least you're getting a new part. To be able to fix it. Yeah, there's a lot of things that 
you know, I'd like to do, but you just got to have people to do it. You can't do a lot of things when, you know, you don't have the audience to do it with. So hopefully we'll get that, you know, in the next few weeks, we'll test it out and see how it works. But, um, just so that we kind of recap, we're probably going to use, uh, well, I can give you, I still haven't checked why that domain isn't redirecting. It's actually something I need to do because I'm redirecting it to that website for the purpose of my gospel tracks and everything. And for some reason it's not working. Let me see if it's working now. If it's not working, we're gonna have to figure out, I'm gonna have to figure out why it isn't working. It worked that time. It might be because I have no idea. That doesn't make any sense. But at any rate, let me give you this link. If you guys want to get on there and you know, you can log in there, sign up, whatever. It's a, it's a Wix site. It's not... Um, It's not like social network site or anything like that, but there is a member section for the forum where you can actually post in there and stuff like that. So if you want to look at that site and then we'll create another poll. You can tell me. How you like it? See, we can create polls on the fly. Polls, polls on the fly. Uh, that's funny. So, yeah, if you wanted to uh, check that out over the weekend or whatever, whenever you get a chance, let me know. I like it. I think we've got pretty much... <laughs> is that what oh my gosh that is weird stuff that people do man I think we've always tried to take the gospel wherever we could, regardless of what any particular site was doing or whatever. Um, I do, I do think that you have to be careful. If you're helping like say China or whatever to spy on us and our information. And if that's really happening and, and apparently it is a, a high number more than like any other site, then that is something that I think 
for me is a problem. Um, I know some people are like, well, you know, but if if that's where the people are and we're trying to reach people, then it would make sense that we would be on there. Uh, and then I guess there are a lot of Christian ministries on TikTok. Um, I don't know. It's a discussion. You know, we can have a discussion about it. We don't have to jump into it or dive into it today, but we can definitely look at all the pros and cons of doing it. Or any site for that matter, you know, I mean, we're trying to reach people that are in darkness with the light. And you have to go into the darkness in order to do that. You have to. You can't. When we started this ministry, we didn't say, okay, we're just going to go to Christian sites. And that's it. We went into the darkness. We went into wire. We went into different sites and began to preach the gospel. And that's how we drew people out of the darkness into the light and we drew a lot of christians that were in the darkness um they were trying to some of them were just probably weren't doing good things and then when we came along they were like oh wow a christian site and in and, and the lord's moving and we're gonna join that and so yeah i mean i think you have to take it all into consideration and ask the questions you know, and weigh the pros and the cons. And, and with anything that you do for God, you have to do that because um, obviously, you know, we're not going to put a chat room in the middle of uh, a really bad, terrible site that, you know, I wouldn't want anybody to go there. So why would I, you know what I mean? It has to be, it can't have, you know, um, nudity or a lot of things that are going on, you know, bad stuff. You know, you can't, I mean, we were on um, Tiny Chat for a while. And that was, when I first went on there, you know, it was okay. But then all of a sudden it got pirated by a bunch of losers. And the way that Tiny, tiny Chat worked was whoever if if somebody joined your 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 chat room they could get on there and basically share videos in your room and they could be as uh x-rated as they wanted to be and you'd come back into your room and there'd be all these x-rated videos in there and it was a Jesus Connect room and I mean, you, I could, as an admin, I could, you know, obviously delete all that stuff and I could block people and, but it just wasn't worth it anymore. You know, they let it go. They, they weren't, you know, administrating it. They weren't, you know, you can't have that. You have to be, it has to be a site that doesn't have nudity, that doesn't have bad stuff. Like you now seems to be okay. I haven't seen anything like that on it. I think they do moderate it to some degree not now i'm not saying there isn't nudity somewhere on that site because as long as you've got video cameras and you've got human beings there's going to be bad stuff yeah we could try rave again i mean we haven't even really even tried it i mean we did one or two things Yeah, I'm all for trying anything. You know, if you guys come up with a suggestion like rave is something we've already been on, I would love to try that. Um, I think we should do one night a week where we just go on a different site. You know, if we're just, you know, five or six of us here, we just, you know, go there and have a, a group, you know, and try it out. Um, we could do that with uh, uh, Cast is another one. That was the rabbit chat alternative they took over uh the software for rabbit chat i don't think it's like rabbit chat but they supposedly bought it or whatever i don't know what they did but they have random suggestive users if you run a a, a watch party in there we could try that so there's a, a few things out there that we could try and, and i say as a group 
you know, and we want to reach people, that's a, you know, obviously a, still a winning formula. You know, we've tried it in the past. It's worked. We get some people. And then now we have a chat room. We have a group. We have a place to bring people. We have a website. So we're, we're going in the right direction this year. Last year, you got to remember for me, January, um, basically the, um, the 16th was when my brother died last year. That was the beginning of January, 2024. I mean, 23. So that pretty much did me in. I mean, I wasn't, there's was no way I was going to be productive in any way after that. It was really hard. It took me a long time to, I tried, you know, to do stuff, but it was hard. But anyway, the going into this year, having a, a vision again and kind of having a little bit of a sense of what God can do with us. I think that's going to make a huge difference. You know, we've got some sort of a plan now, whereas last year we didn't really have much of a plan. We didn't have much of any direction. Um, I don't even, I can't even remember if we were still on, we were still on discord maybe trying to do that, but that's, that's been dead for a couple of years. It seems like now. I mean, discord's not dead. If you've got, a group of people and you want to move them on to discord and start, you know, and you're pretty creative, you could do good on discord because it does have a lot of people that you could draw from. But um, I'm going to tell you, I believe that the higher ups at discord, the people that run it, administrate it. I do believe that they are very selective on who they uh, send algorithms to and suggestions too, because we, at first we did okay, but then all of a sudden everything just shut down. We weren't getting any new people and it happened all at one time. Like it happened all at once. And it wasn't just us. It was a, every Christian group that I knew that I was, if I had joined somebody's group or whatever, they were having the same issue. So I think it was something that was done deliberately by discord and they can control that. I mean, they have the control of what, who they allow to see what. I mean, it's their site. That's the problem on being on a platform is you don't have any control. We were going to use um, Geneva was that one app that I was testing out. It was a mobile phone app. You could text. It was kind of like the Telegram, but it was it was like having your own Telegram or your own, you know, Facebook Messenger, you know, it was it was very cool the way it was set up. And you could actually invite people and it was a good thing. And then they have a discovery where people could discover you within the the Geneva family of of sites or whatever. So I you know, I signed up to be a a, a part of that discovery and I never saw my site appear. So I contacted them and they said that they determine who is allowed to, you know, be in their discovery. So in other words, you're a Christian group. We don't want to uh, put you in our discovery. Uh, we, we, you know, you're welcome to use our site and and you know and pay for it, but we're not going to put you in our listing. Well, I said, forget it. That's, you know, discrimination number one. But number two, I don't need your site that bad. It wasn't that good of a site. But it, what I'm saying is, don't think for a minute that we're not being singled out because we're a Christian group. We are. In the world, the liberal world and the technology world, they're not Christian friendly. Silicon Valley is not Christian friendly. Google is not Christian friendly. Look at how many people were censored on YouTube, especially during the pandemic. 
Look at how many people were censored, churches, Christians, singled out and, and censored. Freedom of speech, all of that was at stake because of these technology companies. Well, that's, you know, that, that comes back to why Elon Musk bought Twitter. He was tired of people being censored. He was tired of people not being able to have a voice. So he, you know, we know what he did. He bought it. And then for some unknown reason, he called it X. <laughs> a big black X. I, at first, I thought it was, a, he was punking everybody. It was a joke. I mean, I don't understand why he had to change the name. I, I, I never minded the name or the logo. It didn't bother me. But X... It just seems so ridiculously dumb. And that's just, again, my opinion. I mean, I don't even really use Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it. But, I mean, yeah, it, thank you, Caleb. It's, it is the worst rebrand in history. It is. It, it really is. I, and I think at some point it, it will have an effect on people's brains I'm an X. I'm X'd out. <laughs> People are going <laughs> to... Oh, they're going to start seeing X's. I don't get it. I don't get the name, rebrand, and any of that. And now... I guess he tried to get this... TikTok guy or YouTube guy. His, like, I don't know if you heard the story... He's known as the beast. He's supposed to be this creator. You know, he gets like millions of followers every time he does a post or whatever. And he's really popular. And, and uh, Elon tried to get him to come over and do some stuff on on Twitter or X. And he said he wouldn't do it <laughs> because they don't get enough. They don't make enough money on Twitter. And so he got turned down. And it was just kind of interesting to me because I, I don't think Twitter or X or whatever you want to call it is a video site like a TikTok. It's not. That's not the purpose of it. The purpose of it is for news, for business people to go on there and post their stuff, or for trolls to go on there and post about how much they hate Trump. That's basically what Twitter is. It's a political news you know, making machine, and it is the number one political news. It, it ha well, what what for what it is, that's what it's known for. <clears throat> but TikTok and that genre of video stuff is taking over the world. Everybody's in their brother and their sister and their cousins and uncles and aunts are on there trying to get popular and trying to get famous. Everybody's trying to get famous. They're trying to get videos out there so they can get likes and hits and maybe they can get advertising and, and make money off their videos. And it's crazy. You know, and I think that's one of the reasons why I want to get back to doing discussions. I do think people really deep down want to have discussions. Um, that's kind of what made Wire Club popular, even though it doesn't have any modern uh, technology, it's old, archaic site. It still doesn't have video chat. It's... I don't even understand how they keep it going, to be honest. Um, they have fewer and fewer people, but they have these stupid games. Uh, what was it? Uh, Wordy and bingo and these stupid games that people they get on there and what do they, they don't win money they win like badges or icons and things i mean i don't know. <laughs> i don't get what what is the fascination with it it's so 1990s but yeah somehow it just shows you how important discussion is that because they have discussions, people talk. People want that. 
That's why I don't think it's dead. That's why I don't think you can give up on that. And you don't have to be a, an influencer or be a TikToker or a YouTuber to make it. You just have to be willing to engage people in lively discussion. And that's what I want to do. That's what we've tried to do. And I think we can still do that. <clears throat> so, yeah, when you get on the site, you look on the forum, you can see how you can post on there. And it's set up where we can have categories, we could have topics, just like a forum should. And then you can roll that out. Now, another uh, reason that it's important or still popular, if you look at sites like Reddit uh, or Discourse or any of these commenting sites, or they're very, very populated. And that shows you something. They don't have, I mean, yeah, they might have videos on there for people to watch. I mean, everything is video driven now. But there's discussions going on. People are talking about things. They're talking about politics. They're talking about whatever. If we can get into that, when we have the, the format to do that now, then we can start and reaching out and getting those people coming in. And that's where we're going to grow. In my opinion, that's how we'll grow. But you have to, you know, and so I'm going to be working on that. Now, this is where you guys can help me by giving ideas, topics, discussion topics. What do you want to talk about? What do you think is interesting? Now, of course, we're going to talk about the Bible. We're going to talk about Jesus, God, the Bible. We're going to have discussions you remember how we did that on Discord? Um, do you remember uh, when we had the Bible discussion channel and we had different topics going on in there? And what was his name? Oh, man, he was always posting in there. I can't think of his name. I, I mean, it was uh, Jordan or Josh or... Oh, man, I can't think of his name now. But anyway, he was always posting in there. He, I kind of asked him if he wanted to head that channel up since he was always posting, asking questions. And But, it, you know, you got to have, if you're going to run a forum, and especially if you're going to reach out to people in public, you're going to get trolls. You're going to get people that want to argue. So you got to have moderation in there, and you got to be able to moderate it. Because uh, you know how Wire Club was. Wire Club was known for, I mean, I, I found out about religions and cults I didn't even know existed until I went on Wire Club. And then all of these weird ideas start coming out. And I was every day battling with people over these stupid religions that were not even, they were just basically offshoots of, Christianity, but they weren't Christianity. They were false cults. So they were, you know, Baha faith and things like that that were just really strange ideas. Um, <laughs> and they would use scripture. And so you'd have to go, well, even though you're using the Bible, Satan used the Bible. Satan quoted the scripture, even though he, he misquoted it for his own gain, right? He misquoted it. If you ever, uh, that's what the devil does. He he doesn't have any interest in actually knowing the Bible. He knows it well enough that he can twist it. There's a, in Psalm 91, something that came to me when I was reading it. Well, it's when Jesus was on the pinnacle of the temple with the devil, and the devil told him to jump off because the angels would catch him. And it says in the uh, nah, Psalm, and, and he uh, he he was he was loosely translating. The devil was loosely translating Psalm ninety one eleven. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. 
All right. And that's where he stops. That's where the devil stops. And Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. But if you read down here, it's interesting. In the 13th verse, it says, thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall you trample underfoot. <laughs> and that, you notice Satan didn't quote that because that was a, a verse regarding us trampling underfoot the devil. The devil is a, a roaring, he's, he's called as a roaring lion. He's called the dragon, the, the adder, the snake. He's a serpent. These are all terms that are characteristic of the devil. And so he stops, the devil stops there because if he would have read the next verse, he would have been reading his own demise. You follow me? That is interesting that I saw that one day and I'm like, no, well, no wonder he didn't quote any further down. You know, that's why you have to read the whole context of something in the Bible. You can't just take a verse out of context. But see, that's what people do. And this is what Satan did. Even to Jesus, he took scripture out of context and he didn't read the full context. That's why we have to read the full context of something. You can't just take a scripture and take it out of context to try to build a doctrine or trying to build a truth. You have to take the, out of the word of, of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. So the Bible tells us that we're to. So we're actually to, um, you know, take the whole context of something and in, in, in our consideration of a, of a doctrine. In other words, if you're going to say um, that in order to be saved, you have to be, you have to believe on Jesus Christ and then add whatever to it, baptism with water, speaking in tongues. Um, or whatever, say, well, in, in order to be saved, you have to be baptized in water and speak in tongues. Well, that's not correct. That's incorrect. That is not what the Bible says. It says, by grace, through faith, we're saved, not of our works, lest any man boast. So you have to read everything in context and take everything in context, because there are groups out there that will stress those things and they'll quote one verse and one verse doesn't make a doctrine you have to take into consideration the whole entirety of that of the doctrine just take the doctrine of baptism and water when you read the whole context in the book of acts they were baptized right away and one could you know take from that 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 was a part of the salvation and, and yet we have in another instance where people were not baptized in water right away. They were baptized in water later. So we have the thief on the cross who was never baptized and he went to heaven. So if water baptism saves us, then then that there's problems with that theology. Now, are we saying baptism isn't important? Of course not. Jesus said to, you have to be saved first, though, to be baptized. He said, those that believe and have accepted me need to go on to baptism. So the, 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 the emphasis is on faith, not works. Faith, not works. But yet people make doctrine. That's what they did in Paul's day. They tried to say you had to be circumcised. You couldn't just believe on Jesus Christ. You had to be circumcised. You had to add something to your salvation. And this is dangerous because what does it do? It takes away from the cross. It takes away from the work of Christ. Christ said, it is finished. When he died on the cross, our salvation was complete. There was nothing that could be done other than what Christ did. If we could do something to save ourselves, it wouldn't be grace. Amen. It would be works. So that's something that's just one example of how if you take a scripture out of context and not add all of the context that you could you could actually be deceived. Satan is the master at this. 
And so he can he can twist the scripture. He can that's what a cult is. It's a twisting of the Bible. It's a you know, it's taking the Bible out of context. It's it's adding to the Bible, which is if you do that, you know, the end of Revelation says you'll you'll actually be in the lake of fire. It's that damnable to add to or take away, subtract from the Bible is is a is a one way ticket to hell. That's what it says. So it's very important how you interpret the Bible, how you take the Bible. Now, am I saying that if you are innocent child of God and and you believe the doctrine that wasn't true that you're going to hell? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that if you are corrupt, and I'm not saying anybody here, but in general, if somebody is corrupting others, if they know deep down inside that what they're saying is wrong, but yet because of, for whatever reason or deception or Satan using them, they'll go on and perpetrate that lie. That's dangerous. And that's what happens. And it's it's just an interesting example of how the devil used that even against the son of God. Like he was going to, try to deceive jesus how stupid was he jesus is the word become flesh he was the living walking bible and <laughs> he's the word and yet satan thought well i'll just twist this a little bit and jesus and you i mean he obviously yeah the cross damaged his brain to the point he was brain dead by the time he came to jesus his head was crushed by the Lord Jesus Christ. But you think about the stupidity of that. Now, yeah, human beings can be deceived. I mean, if you, we've never done that here yet. And, you know, one of the things that I've always, you know, felt that I would do is I would have in my evangelism training ministry that i would have that the study of the cults because one of the things that you'll run up against a hundred percent if you're witnessing for the lord is people that are involved in wrong teaching wrong ideas and if you take just one like the latter day saints and if you listen to them It's interesting to me how they camouflage even their name because their name has come up so much in these really weird um, scandals uh, with you have the Mormons and the, um, you know, in these sexual scandals, you know, they have incest and weird, just weird stuff. So now they've tried to disguise it. Now they're the community of Christ. That's the name of their church. Instead of the Latter-day Saints, it's the community of Christ. And if you look at them from a sign, from that, they just look like a normal church. They're doing blood drives. They're involved in the community, blah, blah, blah. But if you get into the doctrine, they'll even use terms now like born again. But when you slice in your ginzu and dice through it, you get Jesus and Lucifer were brothers, and you know they fought, and and and, and that we can be gods, and 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 this all of this weird stuff that comes out of that. And then you go, wow, okay. But they'll, the packaging is deceptive, which tells me they don't, they don't really believe what they believe. Why, why, why would you, if, if you were afraid of it, or if you thought it was true, why would you camouflage it? Why would you try to cover it up or hide it? That's like a car salesman going. Yeah, this car is wonderful, and he's standing, and there's a dent, and he's standing in front of it going, but don't look at that dent. It's it's terrible what they're doing. 
Now, we don't even talk about cults that often on here, but we probably should do it. But if you're wanting to know, and for whatever reason, if you're wanting to know the best book on it that I've ever seen, and it's been around for probably 40 years, it's called Kingdom of the Cults. Uh, And like I said, if you're just going to church and going to, you know, online and 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 on here, not you, but you know, you probably won't. Maybe unless they come to your house, Jehovah's Witness or Mormons. You won't run into them that much. But if you start engaging people in evangelism, which I did for years in many different ways, if if you wanted to know, and you know, that's something that Actually, in my um, Facebook group, but we might actually create a page on our website, too. We can do that. If, but this website is basically a blank canvas. You can do anything with it. I would love to have that. Materials of training people. That's That's really what I did for a number of years as I was a church, you know, growth pastor leader and i would go to churches and do seminars and i would teach people how to witness we'd actually go out and do it that was i did that for a number of years and so i i can still consider that as a very worthwhile obviously very worthwhile ministry but you know if 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 you start witnessing to people and reaching out to people you're inevitably going to come up with somebody that's in one of these cults have you ever talked to a Jehovah's Witness? Have you ever had a Mormon come to your house? You know, they believe in what they believe. Just like we believe in what we believe. And when you start picking apart and and discussing it with them, it can get heated. Because once they start realizing that you know more than they do, which if you know Jesus Christ, right off the bat, you know more than they do. And you can witness to them. And I've witnessed to many uh, Jehovah's Witness. I actually had, uh, I, I hate to say this, but it was a funny video that somebody made. And it was, it was made in England, but this guy opens the door. There's two Jehovah's Witnesses. And he invites them in and he says, well, let's go out on the, on the porch. And as he, Goes to the back door, he opens the door, and there's a cliff, and they go off the cliff. <laughs> I mean, okay, that's a little extreme. <laughs> you know, we're not we're not advocating, you know, doing that. But um, you know, having a discussion <clears throat> with someone, I've witnessed to Jewish people that were educated and in in the synagogues and temples and I've won them to Christ. I've actually led people to Christ that were young teenagers that had gone to school in, in a in a Shabbat in a you know in a in a Hebrew school and they knew a lot more about the Hebrew than I did. But I was able to show Christ through the New Testament and the Old Testament and, and had won them to Christ. You can win people to the Lord using knowledge and using their their own knowledge against them, but you have to know what they believe. A lot of Christians don't have a clue about what these cults are and how many there really are. And we know the main ones, Mormons, Jehovah's Witness. There are so many cults. If I were to begin to tell you um, the names of them, Baha Faith, uh, um, 
you know, obviously Buddhism is is a big one. Um, you know, there's so many flat earthers. <laughs> you know what was crazy? You said flat earth. But what's interesting to me, people people will say they don't believe in God. They believe the earth is flat. And they believe in Bigfoot. <laughs> so it's like... <laughs> uh, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, yeah, I... Uh, I had a... Um, well, you know, it's kind of what happened to Johnny, our friend uh, Johnny from the Ukraine. Yeah, we actually uh, led somebody to Christ years ago. Well, a couple of years back. Well, I don't know how many years, three years, four years now. Had to be at least four years. I mean, he must have sat in our chat room for a year. And then finally one day he just said, you know, I'm ready. He rededicated or accepted Christ. And I didn't see him for about a month. He would disappear on us. He'd get mad. Something would happen. He'd disappear. So one day he came back and he st he's, he's, he's like a flat earther, you know? <laughs> and so I'm like, he wanted to debate me on flat earth. And I'm like, I don't even care. It doesn't matter to me if the earth is flat or round or, or 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 I don't give a darn. I said it doesn't affect my salvation. It doesn't affect the Bible, God, or anything else. So I went and debated him because it was wasting my time. And so he got mad at me. <laughs> I say this, you know, because I'm sure our discussions were public, so uh, it's not anything I'm gossiping about. But he he just was like that. So then he was like, you know. The moon landing didn't happen. That was a conspiracy. So all of the list of things that, you know, the conspiracists have. <laughs> we're starting to come out. And I'm like, man, you just got saved. You're following Jesus. And the thing that you're concerned about is. Flat I can't read that. The what does that say at the bottom? Took lessons from who? Oh, Bruce Lee. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> but I mean, you know, if we, well, I guess where I was going with that is if we open up a forum for public discussion, we, we're going to have to also understand that we're opening that up for trolls. Because trolls are drawn to open discussions, like moth to a flame. <laughs> And that was it, you know, and, and if or people that are in cults are drawn to that. And, and we knew that when we were on Discord, we started to get a lot of random people. And we started getting people that were even Christians, people that say they're Christians, but they start getting into legalism or they start getting into self-righteous behavior where they start thinking they're better than other people and they start condemning Christians and coming in. And that's what they were doing in discord. They were coming in and condemning 
me and our room because we were allowing Catholics to come in. And I'm like, you know, so in other words, you would rather exclude people that need Jesus because you want to be righteous in some weird way, which violates everything that Jesus did. Jesus ate with sinners. He sat down with Republicans. I mean, publicans. He he was basically with those prostitutes came to him, you know, those that were demon possessed. I mean, he didn't go after people that were the Pharisees of the day. And so if we're modeling ministry after Jesus, then the most obvious way to do that is to reach out to people that aren't righteous. Jesus said, I didn't call the righteous, but the, those that need a position. These these people were coming in, and, it, and that's one of the things that hurt our Discord group, is they started coming in and acting self-righteous. Some of these people that I was witnessing to, they were just coming to the Lord. They hadn't even hardly had, some of them were, were, were just getting, they weren't even saved yet. They were still unsaved people. But they were listening. They were coming in and they were starting to get from the Lord. And then these, I call them trolls, but they were like self-righteous Christians that were coming in and saying that, how dare you? How dare I what? Try to reach lost people that need Jesus? I didn't set up my Discord room to be a church. That was what their mistake was. They thought I was doing this to draw Christians. No, I was doing it to draw sinners, just like I did that everywhere I went. So when I explained it to them, I thought they would be smart enough to get it. Unfortunately, they weren't. And then they wanted to cause trouble. And they were young, immature. It's just like so many people that I would tell them, and how many young men did God send my way? I can... I can count the number of them. They would come in. They would just start this whole thing. You know, they were zealous for the Lord, which was good. But they wanted to control every aspect of people's lives. They wanted to spy on them and 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 go and 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 catch them in some sin, so they could then, I guess. Uh, confront them and in some way or another that would make them feel holy i don't know but i told him i said you can't do that you're not the holy spirit you're not god you're not jesus the bible says take heed lest you fall take heed in other words watch your own soul watch your own self and i had one guy he left he he left. He he thought I was compromising and the God and the gospel and everything else because I was reaching out to these people. That was on. Oh, was it? that was was that Rabbit Chat? Yeah, that was Rabbit Chat. Had to be. And I told him, I said, you know what? One day you're going to realize that this isn't the way to do it. And he came back a few months later. He said, you're right, Pastor Tim. He said, God showed me that I was wrong. I don't take any pleasure in that. I just, I knew what I was doing. I knew that, you know, there's a certain way you have to do things. And and this, this goes way back. I mean, I had people on Wire Club, same thing. I mean, it's it's almost to the point where if you have humor, if, if you use Giphy files, or if you just wanted to just do a chat where you're having fun, where you're laughing. I, I remember once I was playing a game. We were on some one site, and there was a lady that was helping me. She was very gifted in writing, and I mean, she had come out of a cult herself and gotten saved, and she started coming in. She was a part of my group for a long time. She was helping me, and whenever we would do something. She would help. And we got on, I think it was Slack, or one of them, I think it was the Slack site. And we were doing, uh, we were playing a game on there or something. 
And she came in there and she's like, we had just finished a Bible study in a prayer meeting. And she comes in and she's like, you don't have anything better to do than to play a game? Like condemning us because we're playing a game. You know, and her self-righteousness. I said, well, we just, you know, if you'd have came in five minutes ago, we just got done with a prayer meeting and a Bible study. <laughs> I said, you know, you're, so we, I ended up like for two hours talking to her. And to be honest, I don't even know if it was her. I don't know if somebody was, There's there was this other guy uh, on Warrior Club that he did not like me. And he would sometimes he would he would always try to disguise himself and he would always, you know, come in and troll me and all this stuff. And I just, uh, you know, he, he used to he was a strange person. And so I wasn't sure if it was her or if it was him using her profile because he knew I would talk to her. But I, I blocked him from every site I was on. He was a troll. He was one of those self-righteous Christians that thought he was better than everybody else. He would judge people. He was critical of people. And <laughs> so I spent like two hours. If, if it was her, fine. I told her that, you know, we we started getting into, she started, we got into a lot of different topics. She was just basically trying to, it's like she was quizzing me, like, to find out what I really believed and, like, in some weird way. It, it just, it was very strange. And then come to find out, she was doing, playing games on Wire Club. <laughs> so, it's like, there you go, hypocrisy. But it was just it was just her way or whoever it was way of trying to attack us for doing something that they thought was not Christian. God forbid we laugh. God forbid we have a good time. You know, not everything. In the, and that's why I told people not every second of every day has to be spent in prayer. You can have a, a Bible study and prayer meeting. You can win people to Jesus. All day long, you should be doing that. Yes. But there's nothing wrong with having a game time or having a time of chat where you're just laughing or discussing things like we're doing tonight. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. But people will try to put you under bondage. They'll try to just like, just like what they did in Paul's day. They did the same thing. They told Paul that Paul wasn't a Christian. Imagine that. Imagine calling the apostle Paul, you're not a Christian. Paul said, hey, all I got to tell you is look at the fruit. Are you not in the Lord? Are you not saved today because I witnessed to you? That's what Paul said. He put it right back in their face. Now, I'm no Paul, believe me. But I could say the same thing to some of them people. You got saved here. And you're going to say that I'm not a Christian because because I'm having a good time with people and and you know we're we're just laughing sometimes and 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 having fun we're not doing anything wrong we're not doing anything on but the point I'm making is when you open up your site publicly like this to a forum discussions where you know it's one thing if you go on somebody else's platform and do that you can just you know basically you can kind of you know leave when you want come in when you want but when you're running it and you're the, you know, everything stops with you. You have to be prepared for that. And if we're advertising, especially, we will get people. And I believe that there is, that's not necessarily bad. I'm not saying that. And we can deal with it. We dealt with it really good on Discord. I thought Discord, we did a really good job of handling trolls. We kind of just ignored them. We didn't let them get started. If If I thought somebody was going down that path, I would just kick them. And sometimes people would get mad at me for that. Oh, you didn't give him enough time. Well, if you give a man enough rope, he'll hang himself. If you give a troll enough rope, <laughs> a troll will hang himself. I kind of know <clears throat> when somebody's trolling and when they're actually being sincere. 
And that's where you have to learn that over time. You have to develop those skills of being able to discern. Now, there's certain characteristics that people have. If A troll will do a lot of different things. The, the biggest thing a troll wants to do is, is try to embarrass or try to criticize. If you find that people are, are criticizing something, 99.9% .9 of the time they're a troll. You might get a, a percentage of the time where somebody's genuinely giving a, a construction criticism that would help you. And, and their attitude will be such that you'll know that. They might say, oh, you know what? Um, I just really felt like when when I came into the room, there was a bad vibe. And, and you know, this is a Christian room. You know, God is so good. And, well, I just want to praise the Lord or something like that. That's fine. That's just good, positive stuff. Oh, yeah, well, you know, we might have been having a bad moment. We might have had somebody that came in, and and, and that's the way Warrior Club was because we were on there 24 hours a day. We had 24-hour chat. We would have people day and night coming in, different people, new people. I mean, people from all over the world. It was a different – we're not used to that here. We haven't had that success yet here. We will if we advertise, which is what we're starting to do. It'll start happening a little at a time, but we'll, if more and more, if people come onto a site where they can talk freely, openly, it'll it'll grow. And the good thing about Feedspot, which is what we're going to be going on, we're going to probably start that next week. I got to get the website really the way I want it before I do, because I want to make sure that when once you go live on there, people are going to start coming on your website. That's how they do it on there. It's a platform that um, allows you to get random people to your site. You pay for it, and it's something that we're going to try. But if you do this long enough and you have experience, and I would venture to say a there's some mature enough people in this group I know already because we we when we were starting on on Discord we were on Rabbit we ran into those people, Caleb especially you know what I'm talking about, you know a troll from a mile away, you can kind of sort of see that. I would actually, I got to a point where I was sort of able to allow a troll to go for a little bit. And then, you know, once it got to a point where I realized, because sometimes you would get somebody that would come in and they would begin to troll, but then maybe they saw something that was real or the Holy Spirit would hit them and all of a sudden they just stop the trolling and they would be like, oh, this is real. And then they would get involved in the conversation and then that would, that would be cool, you know, and that happened a lot. I had one guy, he used to, he used to troll me all the time. And he would come in and he would say that, you know, he was, I think he was an atheist or agnostic. He was an atheist. He was agnostic. He he wanted me to prove God, like, as if you could under a microscope, like with DNA. Like, yeah, you know that's not possible. But I kept engaging him and engaging him and engaging him. And then one day I finally just said, you know what? I'm done. You're trolling. That's it. And he came back and I was going to block him, but I didn't block him that day. And he came back and he apologized. And he said that he was sorry. And he ended up accepting the Lord. <laughs> he got saved. And he started coming into the Christian rooms and all of a sudden I saw him one day and he was preaching to somebody else about Jesus. So, you know, these things, they can change in a, in a minute, but it's about being led by the spirit. And, you know, in anything that you do, any witnessing, any operation of your life where you're engaging somebody in conversation How important are forums? Well, a, what is a forum? It's a conversation. It's a discussion. 
what is the gospel? In its truest form, it is a conversation, right? It's words. It's just words, but words have power. It is a it is a it is a conversation with another person about God, about his word, about who he is. That's the simplest definition of what the gospel is. I mean, can can somebody get saved without words? Yes. But ultimately, Paul said, how will they hear without a preacher? How will they know unless somebody tells them? So words are the greatest way of communicating. Sir Francis was to see that famous saying, preach the gospel and sometimes use words. But he was alluding to the character of a person's life. And over time, if somebody sees your life and they know you're a Christian, but somehow they would have to know you're a Christian, right? You had to have said something at some point where they knew that. And once, once you say it, once you make it known, then your life is on full display. And people watch that life and they watch that. And that's how, you know, uh, you know, our life becomes that witness. And, and I think a lot of Christians, that's the extent of their witnessing. And that's not at all what, what G Jesus said or, or Paul in his preaching. You know, the examples that the apostles gave us, they went out everywhere. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach. Going is not simply living your life in front of somebody. That's not the only. Now, that is one aspect of witnessing. It is. There are two methods of evangelism that we get from the book of Jude. One is through love and compassion and making a difference. That's being a Christian, showing kindness, showing, you know, if believe me, if you're a Christian, your life stands out. You're different. Whether you want to know it or not, hopefully you know that you're different. I'm sure that people know that. You're kind. If they have something mm -hmm. that's going on in their life, you might be the only one that, that will listen to them. That shows them you're a Christian. Then the other way is in some pulling them out of the flames of hell. Well, that's that's how we go and, and preach. Preach as if people are going to hell. And that's a different method of evangelism. That's where you're going in urgency. So there's two different ways that we evangelize, and we should be doing both of them, not just one. And so that's kind of that. Anyway, listen, guys, I got to go. Um, I'm going to start charging. I'm going to do phone uh videos i'm gonna to have to start charging my phone up because i'm gonna lose my connection again all right well anyway it's it's been fun i've enjoyed it i hope you guys enjoyed just having a chat here So we'll try to get together Sunday night. God willing, we'll see how that goes. Um, always, you know, hopefully that'll go good.
<laughs> I'm charging for the messages. <laughs> no, it's free. The gospel is free. Well, it it's free, but it costs everything. Well, it costs God everything, anyway. All right, well, sounds good. Let's uh, get these things going, and hopefully by next week, we, we maybe start seeing um, some activity on our website and traffic on there, and continue to use this Telegram chat. Um, I like that we, we can stay on here because we, we like it. It's, it seems to be a good fit. There's a lot of things, like I said, we can do with Telegram that we're not doing because we just need to research it a little more. And uh, one day I'm going to look like that. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. Uh, all right. Anyway, we'll see you later. God bless.